Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad you're joining us again today. Today we are on location in very beautiful Jaffrey, British Columbia at the Ideal Community. It's utterly gorgeous up here, and uh, I've come up here to visit the community and Natasha Kolsar, who is the founder of it, as well as to study some more total biology, this time with an MD and homeopath from Brussels, who we've had on the show before, Edward Van Dunn. Edward has been teaching a very intensive class in total biology here and uh, just getting to the roots of the people in the community as well as mine through a series of different um, understandings of the nature of human beings and getting underneath you could say to the essence, to the roots, to the causes of why we are the way we are and it's been utterly fascinating and very gripping in so many ways and uh, everyone is going through a process that's very deep and actually very very valuable so we're very glad to have Edouard with us today to talk about the process of total biology and its interface with the people with whom he has been working with it over the past many years so welcome Hello. good to see you so Edouard first of all you know, you have a vast medical experience and you're a homeopath as well. What was it about total biology that attracted you? Well, I, I first met Dr. Hammer, which is a German physician. And uh, some friends of me, when I was just starting my practice, spoke about this tremendous physician. And, the and new medicine. Told, yeah, they told me that this man was able to see on a simple scanner all kind of disease the patient got and he was just looking at the scanner and he a could scanner tell. like a cat scan or pet scan no, of the, the brain the first scanner in, in the year in the in the 18s so a very simple scanner oh in the eight uh, in the 80s in the 80s oh yes yeah. and he could just uh, by very carefully uh, watching uh, remark some changes in the structure of the brain on the scanner and from that point he could tell the patient uh, what kind of tumor they had, where the tumor started, when the tumor started, what kind of metastasis they got, where the metastasis were, mm. uh, and what is not more important, why they got this cancer, what kind of conflict they got um, with people, and <clears throat> so I mean with the with the with the proposition that cancer is caused through conflict yeah. with people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, that in itself is a, you know, generally medically radical point of view. It's, it's a, a point that physicians have real difficult to accept yeah. still today. Uh, but it's pure scientifically. Yeah. You can see it on the scanner and if you know very well the clinical story of the patient, mm -hmm. you can exactly know uh, and, and show that it's true. It started at that moment when a very special event happens, mm -hmm. and and so Fabulous. one of his students who was older than I was in that time because I was just starting my practice. Yes. Uh, also, was a student, and uh, this guy developed the total biology afterward because uh, Dr. Hammer had a lot of troubles with with uh, the physician world, and the medical even establishment. Yeah, he even went to to, to jail. For one year in Germany, he lost his right to practice uh, medicine in Germany. Then he went to other countries. Um, even in other countries, he went to jail again. A hero is never appreciated in his own town <laughs> that's or country. True. And 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 this this um, doctor was really um, an innovator, yeah. and he could have the the Nobel Prize because yes. what he found is really a total change in, in the way of thinking medicine but um, this is not a very good way or very appreciated way by the industrial people and the pharmaceutic world because um, they should see their interests uh, break down yes yes because he showed that each patient is creating his own cancer his own disease and that by that way he can cure it 
by itself mm -hmm. without having other kind of medication. He caused it, he uncauses it. Exactly. So um, this is a kind of revolution and uh, all the pharmaceutical world don't want this kind of revolution. So they, they are uh, fighting very strongly to make this kind of discovering disappearing. Yeah. And, and Dr. Claude Sabat in France... Took but the fact is, Edouard, you and I both know that going back to Hippocrates in the West, going back to Ayurvedic medicine in the East and ancient Chinese medicine, this understanding of the relationship between conflict, emotional imbalance and organic imbalance mm -hmm. is there everywhere in the literature, everywhere and always mm -hmm. in the indigenous understanding of medicine. Yes, empirically, uh, so by yeah. working with people all over the world, right. all shamans, uh, natural practitioners know this right. link. But no, it's proved scientifically. Yeah, right. With the new scanners, we can exactly, with the PET scan, we can exactly see this relation between the neurons which are affected in a conflict and which is the part of the brain this kind of neurons are connecting with. And so we can see that if something change in the brain, it change at the same time in the organ uh -huh. directed by the, the brain. And so this mind-body relation is no scientifically proved. But what about the knowing of what the conflict is that caused the lesion first in the brain and then in the, in the organ? Is, well, how is that mapped in this way? And, and in fact, it's not the, the thing in itself which is important. It's the way you perceive the thing. So, if somebody dies, several people around can perceive it completely different. And so, can use different part of their brain mm -hmm. to uh, treat Digest. the conflict. Oh, okay. To treat the conflict All right. in their brain. And so, they will have different places in their body who will react and make oh, a cancer based or, on the uh, perception uh, of the and the person. interpretation of the action so for instance or event if somebody is dying and the first person is perceiving it as a lack of this person so it will affect the liver uh -huh. if she perceives it as a lose or of a person a loss a, a loss yes. of the person um, it will affect the kidneys uh, if it brings up her or his own fear of death, it could affect the lungs. Exactly. Uh, and so on. So, so the same uh, fact can create by the personal perception different cancer. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, but is that part of it mapped? Is that through observation that Dr. Hammer... I understand the connection between the brain and the neuronal activity and the organ but that he associated each particular organ stress with a specific emotional conflict. Was that based on observation in his psychiatric practice? That was based Over on time? his practice. And Dr. Saba uh, brought this practice further. Ah, so, yes, okay. so, and, and all their students, and I am student of both of them. Yes. So uh, yes. We, have, um, we are maybe one one or two hundred uh, doctors in the world practicing this. Oh. And so we have now uh, thousands of cases where we can make the connection between the feeling, the part of the brain, mm -hmm. and the organ which is affect. And so this was verified during um, 30 years uh, all over in the world, in the Western world mostly, where mm -hmm. there are scanners, where there are um, very deep a clinical investigation. How come nobody bothered the uh, Freudians when they were dealing with psychosomatic medicine? Because their approach is really, they didn't have the benefit of Dr. Hammer, but they had the f fundamental understanding that people have had in the West since Hippocrates, that there is this inherent organic relationship between the psyche and the soma. Mm -hmm. How come no one was arrested there? Do you know what I mean? Not exactly. How come <laughs> they 
the psychoanalysts were doing this kind of work going back to the 30s and the 40s and the 50s before Dr. Hammer and Dr. Sabah. But I don't know of any cases that an, a psychoanalyst got into trouble with the law for using a psychological approach to resolving a physical problem. But I don't think there were so many cases of healing of, with ah, psychoanalysts. They were analyzing the psyche. Right. So this is not dangerous. I see. <laughs> but if they're what, not effective, what then it's not going to be dangerous. dangerous. What okay. becomes more dangerous is when you speak about healing cancer, healing AIDS, healing uh, un right. curable un disease. Right. By and, medicine, um, right. I for yes. the medical world, if you speak about that, they believe you, you, you are crazy because right. they they can do it. You, you know, medicine is only uh, curing the symptoms, not resolving the conflict and the problem. Exactly, behind. exactly. So we have ample evidence of that. That's for sure. Yeah. And and what I saw in my own practice is that some children, adults, who were considered as nearly dead and where there was no treatment anymore for them, that when they became aware of the conflict and they changed it, they at, at the end could completely recover and heal themselves, just by themselves, because there was no treatment anymore for them. There was no, no surgical yeah. ability or, or there was or no... Or even drug. Nothing, no, no radiation, no nothing. Right, they were sent home basically to die. Yeah, so and then suddenly, suddenly yeah. same thing happened. They they became aware of something. They really wanted to live, and they, if they did it, something changed in their brain, and in their physiology, and 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 so they suddenly, by a miraculous way, seems to to cure. Mm. But in, in fact, it's because the brain changed that the body changed with. So it, in a sense, it's not a miracle at all, except that life is miraculous. Mm. But it appears as a miracle when you don't understand it. Exactly. But when you understand the mechanism, then it's the nature and action. The right, biological biology mechanism. and action. Right. And so, um, What are some uh, examples of what you're referring to with children or other patients of yours? Well, the, the first the first case I saw in my own practice was a 13 years old uh, girl who was dying after 36 blood transfusion because she had an ulcus on a cancer of the muscles of the stomach. And the day she started to, to bleed, they, they made a scanner, they made some investigation and they saw a, a very, very big cancer and they could operate this cancer because it was too too big and too infiltrating yeah, the, 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 complex the, the intestine and, mm -hmm. and um, they couldn't irradiate because it was near the intestine and she could die from from uh, bleeding and in that time there was no um, oncology for that kind of, of cancer mm -hmm. so they gave her 36 blood transfusion to help her to survive for a while but after 36 blood transfusion, they said, okay, no, it's, it's enough. We, we can use all this blood, uh, bring her back home and let her die. Give her some morphine and she, she went home. And at that time, one friend uh, who was working also with me, with her, a therapist, asked her, okay, before you die, just tell me, what would you like to do? to do or to live for the last time in your life. And this, this child who was under a very strong regime, uh, e eating some microbiotic uh, food and uh, food supplement and mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of, of, of treatment, natural treatment, because the other one... Sure, they were uh, trying were, everything. Uh, so they were trying. She was a, a real encyclopedia of everything that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, suddenly, with this question, her eyes became shining and she started to live again and she said, I, I want a cookie. 
<laughs> and she never had a, a cookie since two years. And then, then the, this person went to, to buy her some cookies. And she 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 devoured her cookie with devoured such, uh, devoured her cookie with such a pleasure. <laughs> and then she fell asleep and we thought she was getting in coma. But the next day she was still alive and she didn't bleed anymore. Mm. Then we asked her a second question, and what would you like to do now with your life? She said, oh, I would like to go in the south of France uh, to spend some holiday with my cousin. And we put her in a car and sent her to the south of France. And there, she didn't bleed anymore for months. And after three months, the cousin parents were a little bit uh, <laughs> disappointed. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what should we do? She, she, she should be already be dead for three months and, and she's still alive. <laughs> the doctor said she should be dead by now. What's going so, on? <laughs> take, take, you, take your daughter back. <laughs> so she went back to Belgium. She's costing us and, a fortune. <laughs> yeah, and after 24 hours she came home, she started to bleed again. Then the next day she came back to my practice and we started to speak. What happened? You're living for three months and now you're bleeding again? And I asked her, what, what would you do next? And then she A said, magical uh, question, she said uh, I would like to stop all this medication I have to take. She said, good deal. You don't need them anymore. Just threw them in, in, in the garbage. <laughs> and and um, she did it. But then her mom became very upset, said, we paid so much money for that. What is that for a kind of doctor who would tell you something like that? <laughs> and she phoned me and she was very angry. And the she, mother. The mother. And she, she told me, um, listen, guy, I prefer to see my daughter dying with this kind of medication than becoming healthy with your kind of voodoo process. I said, what are you telling about? I will make you process. I said, I, I just help her to live. So what are you telling me? And, and she was so upset that I became very angry with her. Yeah. And then I invited her to go to eat with her to the restaurant. And she accepted immediately. Yeah. Then we went to a Chinese restaurant. We eat some very nice food and when her stomach was full. I asked her the best question of total biology. What did you live in the past that you couldn't digest and that oh. stay in your stomach, but that you forgot and give through the generation to you, doctor? Oh. And the cancer of you, doctor, is coming from you, stress, you come from. And then she started to cry and she told me her, her story and her conflict that programmate this disease of her doctor and in fact she was get nearly getting married with a Swiss guy and the day before the, the, the ceremony mm -hmm. he came in her room and told her listen I'm a Protestant you're a Catholic I'm really afraid that my children should not be Protestant so I I stop it here I, I'm not marrying you. And she fell in very deeply depression. That avoid the biology, um, no, that, that this conflict became biological. Right. So she didn't make the cancer. Because she got the depression that blocked it, ex expression in body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But her child took the conflict and made the cancer. So right. the conflict stayed in her head. Right. But the baby, she got, got afterward, right. afterward um, took this information. The emotional conflict of the parents becomes the potential physical conflict of the exactly. child. And so this was the first case. And, and each time we have the perfect story and we see exactly. So as a result of that dinner conversation, yeah. she herself freed herself from the conflict and she went out of a depression she came out of her depression that was all those years yeah. that had her feel that she'd rather have her own daughter die mm -hmm. than deal with her own stuff 
and the issues at yeah. hand. Exactly. And the daughter lived? The daughter is still living from an, an uncurable cancer. And um, so in, in, in that way, it's very important to, to go back in the past to see exactly the day when the disease start, where what it was programmed. Mm -hmm. Same time it can be programmed in when you're a child. Same time it can be programmed during the pregnancy. And same time it can be programmed in the family history. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why we uh, put so much attention to the genealogy, to the perinatal uh, period, mm -hmm. and to the childhood, because these periods are very important periods to program a disease that will occur or appear in the body right. later with a very small detail that put the program in action right a trigger of some yeah. sort right. and that's why it's so difficult for the classical um, practitioner because they just look at the present and they don't take care of the past exactly uh, of the history they don't exactly they don't look at the historical perspective on how this came to existence yeah. and so I can tell you uh, another story please of um, uh, a woman a woman that came for a, a cancer of um, the pituitary gland, uh, secreting an hormone, which is a, a, no, a normal hormone uh, that all women after the delivery mm -hmm. normally secrete. But mm -hmm. uh, she was making a lot of this hormone. And so uh, this hormone... And which hormone is this? The prolactin. And the prolactin is a hormone that produces the milk. Uh -huh. And this... this uh, his wife was making milk and had no menstruation <laughs> so the first question was so you are making milk for what are you making milk mm -hmm. what is the purpose of making milk in sure. biology yeah. to food to feed, to the, feed child. the child so where is your child <laughs> should have no child so, but in fact she she was um, she was 32 when she met a guy she was very in love with and she get pregnant from this guy and she was so happy and then when she told her guy that that she was pregnant he said i give you a few dollars go and make an abortion i don't want this kid and i don't love you and so she got a, such a big conflict and she went to 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 make the abortion but afterward she was so sad of what she did that she get in a very deep depression and the day her child had to come to, to life. She started her tumor. In other words, didn't basically realize. nine months after she realized that... Not nine months after, because she, she made her abortion after one month. So oh, yeah. eight months eight later, months, excuse me, right. when she normally had to, to, to deliver right. her, her child, mm -hmm. she started her tumor. And she had a two and a half year tumor, growing, 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 growing while she was making milk to feed the child. her dead child. But she, she couldn't realize, she was really crazy, she couldn't realize her child was dead. Because in her brain, she, she talked, she forgot the abortion, and she, she went further in her life as there was nothing happened. Basically, she did not integrate the information mm -hmm. that she killed her, her, her child. child. So she was living as though it were still alive. Her body was still living as though it were alive. Yeah. And so I, I make her, her conscious that she killed her baby, that it has no reason uh, anymore to, to, to feed a baby we, that doesn't exist. Right. And so she realized that she got a big emotion. Then I proposed her a ritual. To buried her child with a puppy, uh, to write a letter, a pub, like a doll or some yeah, representation, yeah, some representation, because she she she, sure. she had no opportunity to to bury her, her child, yeah. and by doing that, after two days she got her menstruation. After two other days, she stopped to produce milk, and the concentration of hormone of the prolactin felt, of the prolactin fell from five thousand units to three hundred. And the norms in, in Belgium were between seven, 70 
and, and 500. So after six days, everything was in order. And before the operation, because she was getting, getting blind. Um, the day before the operation, I had to make a new scanner. And they saw that the tumor was completely gone. And so this person was never operated. Amazing. Amazing. It makes you completely rethink everything exactly. about what it is we've been taught, about what is what. Mm -hmm. And it brings us back to the ancient knowledge like we were talking about earlier, the indigenous knowledge, which always understands that the mind, the emotions, and the body are one yeah, exactly. and need to be dealt with that way. Well, uh, merci pour le travail. Thank you for your work. It's just brilliant. It's just and the beginning. Uh, huh? So it's yeah. everybody could do it, yep. but it has a lot of participation of the exactly. patient. Uh, exactly. It's not the physician who do the work. That's right. It's a cooperation between physicians and patients that takes time. And that's why uh, not every physician is ready today to do it because there are a lack of physicians in the world. And this takes time, a lot of time. Exactly. And um, we are not yet able to succeed in every case. But sure. it's... Um, well, honestly, Edouard, that it happens in one case shows that it can happen in others. For just one, mm. in reality. It's just the beginning. It means that it's part of our biological structure. Yeah. So, merci encore. With pleasure. Good to have you. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. <laughs>